Okay, um, in today's tutorial I'm going to be looking at phase diagrams. So a phase diagram is basically a graph. And it's a graph of pressure against temperature. And we use it to see what phase a particular material is at at a different pressure or temperature. So they tend to look something like this. So we have these regions. So they'll have we'll have a solid region here, liquid region here, and a gas region here. And what this allows us, what we can do, is we can look at this graph. And if we know that a material is at a certain temperature, say here, and a certain pressure, say here. We just read, we look at where they, those, that temperature and pressure is, and we know because it's in this region, because it's in this region, then it must be a gas. So that's, that's basically it. And um, so you need to be comfortable being able to interpret these. They're quite useful because what you can do is you could be given a particular pressure. Let's say you're told that you know that you have material that's at this pressure, which would be measured in pascals. So, you know, this could be like 100 pascals or something. And you might be asked, well, what happens if I increase the temperature at this pressure? And if we, and what you, what this allows you to do is to say what order the phases go in. So in this case, if we increase the temperature, we'd start solid, then go to liquid, then go to gas, because we're in this region here. Now you're used to like most people, when they think of changes in, in phase, they think of water. So you always think about it where I increase the temperature, it's going to go through the solid liquid gas kind of order. But you can see if we were at a pressure down here and increase the temperature, then actually we go straight from a solid to a gas. We don't we miss out the liquid phase. So that's why this is a uh, phase diagram is important, because it, it tells us like what's going on at every single pressure, every single temperature. So a few other things you need to know about this graph. These lines, the lines between the phases, they tell us, like, uh, on those lines, the two different phases are in equilibrium. So across this line, along this line here, the, f um, the material at these temperatures and pressures will be in an equilibrium between solid and liquid. And this point in the middle here is what's called the triple point. And then at the triple point, a material is in equilibrium between solid, liquid, and gas. I'll put a video in the description of seeing a material in that phase. It's quite interesting and not something you would kind of experience like in everyday life. Like you need very specific circumstances for it to happen. Now, the phase changes happen as you go across these barriers. And the phase changes have names. So if we go from solid to a liquid, that's called melting, which you'll already be aware of. Going the other way is called freezing. From here in this line here, so this line here, we're going from a gas, sorry, a liquid to a gas directly. That's boiling. And then going the other way is called condensing. that's from liquid to gas. So we can also go from solid direct to a gas. If we go from a solid directly to a gas, that's called sublimation. And if we come from a gas directly from a solid, that's called deposition. It's important to know these names because if you start doing problems based on like latent heat and um, if you wanted to know like how much energy it takes to change phase, then you need to remember what these words are because you need to know whether to use the the correct um, the correct constant, the, cor the correct heat capacity. And that's something I'll look in um, at a later tutorial. So this is kind of the basics of uh, phase diagrams. I'll put, as usual, I'll put this uh, this PDF on my blog so you can have a copy of it. Um, that's about it.